The first question here is just a straight definition. A sample is just a smaller part, a subset of the entire population. On page three of the, of the text, it talks about populations and samples. Question two asks why a sample is used more often than a population. It's because it is usually extremely difficult, expensive, or even impossible to count the entire population. Uh, for example, imagine if you were trying to figure out who everyone would vote for in the upcoming election, it would be nearly impossible to ask every single registered voter in the entire country who they are voting for. That is why we use samples instead. Number three, another definition about parameters and statistics. And uh, the definition is from uh, page four in chapter one of the text. A parameter is going to be a numerical description when we have information about the entire population. But when we're dealing with just samples, anything that's describing um, the sample would be a statistic. Number four builds off of number three. A statistic is a measure that describes a population characteristic. That's false because statistics deal with samples. And a good way to keep that uh, straight is they both start with an S, statistics, samples. And then parameter, population, those both start with P. So that's a good way to keep them straight. Number five, another definition, this time about what is the population. And back where it was talking about samples, it also talks about the population. It is the collection of all the outcomes. So not just some or part, but all the outcomes, responses, or measurements uh, that are of interest for the particular statistical study that we're doing. And number six, we're uh, trying to find out if this statement is true or false. A sample statistic will not change from sample to sample. And this is going to be false because each sample is made up of different elements. The statistics for each sample can definitely be different, whether you're looking at the median or the mean or the standard deviation or any sort of statistic for that sample. They can definitely vary from sample to sample because every sample is different. For number seven, looking at whether uh, a given data set is a population or a sample. A survey of, of 500 spectators from a stadium with 42,000 spectators. So if we were able to survey all 42,000, that would be population data. But since we're only surveying 500, we have a sample because that's just a part of the entire group of spectators in the stadium. Number eight, uh, like number seven, we're trying to decide if we're dealing with a population or a sample. The number of garages for each house on a street. And since we're looking at each and every house on the street and not just a small group of houses from the street, we have the population because uh, we have the number of garages for all the houses for each house on the street. For number nine, we're going to identify the sample and population for our scenario here and we have a survey of a certain number of women from a particular country and we find out what percentage of them received the flu flu vaccine for the recent flu season now the information we're interested in is whether the women have the flu vaccine or not and so for the entire population that we're interested in, it would be every single woman in that country, whether she has the flu vaccine or not. So her immunization status for all the women in the entire country. And then our sample, it's their immunization status out of just that um, survey that we took, our sample of uh, the number of women, whether they had immunization or not. Number 10, like number nine, we're gonna identify the population in the sample. We have a quality control manager randomly selects some bottles of olive oil that were filled on a certain date to assess the calibration of the filling machine. And so what he is gathering his sample is those bottles that he gathered on that date. And then the entire population would be all the bottles of olive oil made on that date. Uh, for number 11, determine whether the underlying value is a parameter, whether it deals with population, 
data or a statistic, whether it deals with sample data. So one of the greatest baseball hitters of all time has a career batting average of this value here. So it's for his entire career, all the data that he's um, ever had as far as batting averages go. So it would be a parameter is dealing with all the population data for his hitting. Number 12, um, we're going to determine whether the number describes a population parameter or just a sample statistic. A survey of a certain number of adults in a country found that 83% think that militant terrorists are a major threat to the well-being of their country. So 83%, is that a value that's coming from data dealing with the entire population? Or is that 83% coming from a smaller group, a subset, a sample of the population? And the answer is it's coming from these Adult, adults that were surveyed, the sample of adults from the country, so it is a sample statistic. Number 13, we're into uh, section 1.2, and we're going to select all the levels of measurement for which data can be qualitative. So some definitions. Um, in section 1.2, it defines what qualitative and quantitative quantitative data is. Now qualitative is talking about a quality, an attribute, a label, something non-numerical. And quantitative data is consist of quantities, numbers, things that we can measure and count. And so whenever we gather data in statistics, we can talk about whether we've gathered numerical, quantitative data, or if it's just attributes and labels and it's qualitative. And then there's different levels of data. And you should read all about um, these definitions uh, here in chapter 2 point or in 1.2. And the first two levels are called nominal and then ordinal. And then the next two, one page over, are interval and ratio. And so with each additional level of measurement, there's this nice chart here near the end of 1.2 that shows how you get a different uh, additional information with each additional level of measurement where the ratio has a yes to all of these um, and nominal all, all you can do with nominal data is put it into categories and so going back to the our question actually before we go back to our question there's also a great chart below here with some great examples of data that falls into each category so check that out uh, but our question 13 if data is qualitative, it has to be at either the nominal or ordinal level. Um, if you're at the interval or ratio level of uh, data, then your data has to be quantitative, numbers, numerical. Number 14, is this true or false? For data at the interval level, you cannot calculate meaningful differences between data entries. So differences, subtractions, how far apart the data interest, entries are from one another. And again, this chart at the end of uh, 1.2 is a great place to turn. Can you subtract data entries and get a meaningful result uh, of the differences between them? And at the interval level and the ratio level, yes, you can. So number 15, determine whether the variable is qualitative, a quality, or quantitative, a quantity, a number. So the state of residence, that's not going to be a number. That's just a description of where someone lives. So it's qualitative. It's an attribute, a characteristic. Same thing for the next question here, someone's favorite rock group. That's going to be qualitative. It's not numerical. It just describes an attribute of that person. For number 17, we're going to determine the le level of measurement for our data set here. And so these numbers here in our data set, they're measuring the heights of a sample of plants uh, 30 days after they've sprouted. And so um, start off with the lowest level nominal. And then we're going to ask, can we move up to the next level ordinal? Can we put the data in order. Uh, so these heights of plants, yes, we could put them in order from the smallest number to the largest number. So we definitely have at least ordinal data. Now, can we move to interval data? Does subtracting 
data entries actually make sense. If you were to subtract one plant's height from the other, you would get a meaningful answer. It's how much taller one plant has grown than the other. Subtractions do make sense. So we have interval data. And then um, to get to ratio, we need to have zero actually mean nothing. Um, nil. So in this case, would a measurement of zero actually mean the plant has no height? And yes, it would. If 30 days after the plant was supposed to have sprouted, it hadn't grown at all, it would have no height. So we do have an inherent zero, um, and that is ratio. Another way to see if you can get to the ratio level is if multiplications, multiplying data values makes sense. And that's how this chart talks about getting to that fourth level one data entry is a multiple of another so if one plant was 20 centimeters and the other plant was 40 centimeters it would make sense to say the one plant is twice as tall 20 to 40 is two times as big and so that multiplication makes sense uh, we have the ratio level of measurement when we're looking at plant heights for the next question, our data is a list of books that our friend has read for school. And so we start at the nominal level and we say, can we move up to ordinal? Can we arrange this data in order? And there's no way to put one book in front of another in a certain order. And so we are stuck at the nominal level. We have nominal data. For number 19, our data is shown in a chart over here. And it shows the different sports in high school and the number of students who play each of those sports. And so we're going to talk about uh, the data shown on the horizontal and the vertical axis. So the horizontal going side to side here are the, um, the categories A, B, C, D, and E, which are the different sports at the school. And so are those sports, let's start at nominal, can we arrange them in order? And the answer is no. There's no way to um, arrange different sports in order which one goes first, which one goes last. So we're nominal data, the different types of sports. And then the vertical axis up and down is showing how many students play each of those sports. And zoom in there so it's a little bit larger. And then so starting at the nominal level, can we arrange that data in order? Yes, we could put the sport with the most students first and the sport with the least student uh, last. So we could arrange the sports in order from how many students play. Uh, does subtracting the data make, uh, make sense, the differences? And again, the answer is yes. You could subtract the number of students in one sport from the other, and the result is how many more students play that one sport. So it uh, the subtraction means something. And then does zero, is there an inherent zero? And again, the answer is yes. If one of these sports had zero, a measurement of zero, it would mean that no students are playing that sport. So we have the ratio level. And again, referring to the chart, multiplications of the data make sense as well. If one sport has 10 players and the other sport has 30 players that's three times as many that makes sense and so we have the ratio level number 20 this time our data is the different regions of a country um, the region with the highest level of coal production and so is that qualitative or quantitative these are not numerical values they are descriptions so it's qualitative data and we start at the nominal level and can we move to ordinal by is there a way to arrange this data in order and there is no uh, natural arrangement uh, from first to last so we're stuck at the nominal level of data that's what we have here number 21 is talking about inherent zeros and the definition is it's a zero that actually means none there's nothing and you have to have an inherent zero when you have the ratio level of measurement and so then you need to go through and just identify a data sets that have inherent zeros and ones that don't. And so just I'll go through a couple. Maximum wind speed during a hurricane, that would have an inherent zero because zero would mean there is no wind. Average monthly precipitation, zero would mean there's no rain. But something like temperature doesn't have an inherent 
zero. Uh, zero degrees doesn't mean there's no temperature, it just means it's really cold.